How's it going, James? Onlinecarshow.net. Well, got another exciting video for y'all today. We're gonna to be putting on a Ram Air funnel scoop on the Focus ST. So with that hesitation, let's go and get this video started. All right, well, just to give you all some background here on you know what transpired to make me you know put mods on the Focus and fix it up or whatnot, it is my daily driver. Uh, the Corvette's still here. It's right in front of me in the garage as I'm shooting this video. The Focus is my day-to-day -day vehicle, and I figured you know if you look at the price of the mod comparison between the two cars, I can throw a couple of bucks at the Focus, put a couple of bolt-ons on it and make it a really fun little car and that's kind of my intention with this and also uh, had recently had the oil changed in it and the guy working on it broke the intake lid so gave me a good excuse for ordering the intake which is sitting over there with uh, three or four parts on top of it that need to be installed too so there's going to be a bunch more mods other than this coming for the car be sure to go ahead and hit that like and subscribe below so you don't miss any of that upcoming content also, I'm uh, about to put in the order probably this week for a huge mod, or I say huge, it's not, in retrospect, I guess it's not huge on what you could spend on mods for a Corvette, but uh, I've got a really big mod coming for the Corvette. Uh, it is a cosmetic mod, not a performance, just to give you all a little hint there, but uh, really excited, and it kind of finishes off uh, one of the mod processes I've been going through on the car, so. And also, just to kind of go over, I want to cover something real quick with this mod before we jump too far into the install, is some of y'all may be expecting to get huge amounts of power over this. Uh, you know, it's a mod, it's really exciting for the car. I don't want to disappoint y'all. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drop a bomb on y'all right now. This isn't really gonna add a whole lot of performance for your car. It's gonna get colder air into the into the intake, which is gonna help. And later on, you know, uh, as you add more mods to the car, this is one of those things that can help add a little bit more power to those mods uh, as you're tuning in the car and stuff like that later on. I think I saw a Top Gear or something episode once where they proved that ram air doesn't even really affect a uh, vehicle's performance unless you're going over like 80 or 100 miles per hour. So. And even then, it's very small. So uh, I wouldn't. I just don't want to hurt. You know, I don't want y'all to get disappointed. You order this, and your car isn't. You know, Gap and Mustangs and Camaros. Uh, it's just that's not going to happen. It's not the way mods work. And this is one of those mods, especially that will pay off over time. And I think it looks. I think it adds a little touch to the car that looks really cool. And that was kind of my intention with it. And uh, it's a, I bought a 3D printed part. Uh, the price range on these funnels is insane. You can go from uh, $30 to $60 3D printed part on eBay uh, up to $165 name brand uh, Big Mouth or something. I think is what I saw it called, intake. You're not going to get a whole lot of power, as I said. So. This is one of those things you might save your money for other things later on that'll give you a little bit more. Uh, in some of the videos I'm gonna do later this week or little $20 mods and stuff like that you could add instead that would give you a little bit more than you'd get out of the $165 one. So that's kind of why I went the 3D printed route on this one. There's just no need in spending the money. I used paint and painted it up, clear coated it. Uh, I'll show y'all. If y'all wanna know my painting process, I'm gonna do another engine cover painting video coming up soon. I uh, went ahead and painted the front fascia of it to match how I painted the brake calipers on the car. All right, well just to go over tools you're gonna need real quick for the job. The only thing I really used in this was an interior pry tool. I recommend one like this, it's thin, metal, you put some strength to it, just to pop out a couple of little plastic tabs in there. Uh, these only cost a couple bucks, really easy to pick up. I'll try to have a link below in Amazon for one. 
And also you're gonna need something based on your kit is just the screws that are in your individual kit, whichever one you ordered. You wanna make sure, of course, to have an Allen key or wrench to match that, that bolt. And that's it. So let's go ahead and get it on the car. All right, just to go over what we're working with here. Uh, as I mentioned, this was a 3D printed part and uh, it came with texture on it all along the tube here. I've tried to smooth it down some. I didn't wanna go any further than that. Uh, for the risk of making it too thin in spots, but uh, did clean it up some and you know This is the only view you're really gonna see and also just kind of show off one other thing I did I had some extra heat shielding stick on heat shielding just from another project laying in the garage I'll put a link below in the description if y'all want to put this on yours, but just something really cheap We can add to it. I know it's right there by the radiator I don't know if that's gonna help or not. We're gonna be putting it in the 2017 Focus ST. Uh, it, basically, all you're gonna have to do, from my understanding, is take off the grill and maybe a couple things up here, and we should be able to use two 10 by 32 or 1032 bolts uh, by one inch and some washers. All right, so we're gonna begin by just basically popping off the grill. And that's pretty simple, actually. You're just gonna take it and basically work it off. Uh, it's got little clips all around it, and we're just gonna take it and pull on it all the way around. Just kinda work it a little bit. You know, get a clip at a time if you have to. There you go. I don't think I broke anything. Nope, all of our tabs are intact, so got it off good. I'll probably clean that up before putting it back on. And you're gonna be confronted with this ugly shroud here. We're definitely gonna do some cleaning here, but gonna be get this shroud. You have two options with this shroud. You can either cut it to let the intake go through, or you can just remove it. Uh, and the shroud should pop off got a tab on both sides probably keeping it in there I think I felt it release on this side yeah there's a push tab I can see let me get this side there we go well sticking on the top so back in this way yeah it's getting under the lip you gotta get that lip out from under it now it's sticking on that lip getting somewhere now I think oh yeah there we go and I'm gonna clean this up uh, according to what I saw to cut this if you opt to just put a hole through it you're gonna see these three lines here and from what I saw you need to basically cut it from one inch over to somewhere over in here uh, cut this entire piece out between th this big section here it needs to be cut out and it should slip through I'm gonna opt to see how it looks with it you know, it doesn't really look too bad with it off. I may just leave it off. Hey, it's some weight loss. <laughs> but yeah, it's not too bad off. I may just clean it up. Might get some more airflow in there to the radiator. I'll give you a better look. What we got dealing with here. If you look up here, once you get all that off, you're gonna see this little vent here. That goes up into the intake. And that's what we're gonna be extending out with the snout. Uh, before we get to any of that, I'm going to clean it up a little bit in here just to save my hands from getting too dirty working on this. And uh, then we'll work on the top part. Uh, the next step is going to be to take off this little air intake piping. I'm not sure how that gets off there. But the whole thing needs to come off. So, Okay, that tab pulls and then pulls off of the tube can't see where this one connects it must be underneath I'm try to pull it out 
This is fun to do one-handed. So if I can do one-handed, y'all can definitely do it too. There we go. One-handed like a pro. Uh, being in some one time, I'll get a chance to clean in there. I'm going to clean up in there. And we should have two screw holes. I thought that would go through. They must be inside the caging in there. So that must be why the screws aren't that long. I guess we'll find out in a minute. All right, and we need to remove this. There's a cover on here. It's gonna come off somehow. Oh, we just got little pop screws in there. So just like the top uh, over the radiator shroud, you're gonna have these little pop screws. Just take a uh, interior pry tool. I'll probably go for the metal one. Here's the one I like to use for stuff like this. And we're just gonna pop those off. The pop things I'm removing are just like this one on the top of the, shr the radiator shroud. They're basically just a thing that comes off in the middle and then it'll allow you to pull the main part of it off. There you go. So that's how the two things that are holding the plate in here are held on. You're gonna need to remove both of those. All right, we've got this sucker off. As I mentioned, it's just basically got these little tabs in here. Here's what I pulled off one side. The one on this side, which is closest to the driver's side, is fun to get to. Just take your time. You may say a couple cuss words. All right, and with that removed, you can start to see some light coming through the holes, and that's the same holes that those tabs are in that we're gonna be using to mount it. I'm gonna mount the screws coming this way with the bolt, so the bolt head is in the engine bay. Hope that's good, we'll see. And just so y'all know how I'm setting this up, I've got a, I'm probably gonna go get a second washer, uh, but I'll have two washers, one on each side, and I've got a lock washer and then the bolt. That'll just help things stay together. If you wanna take a step above that, you could actually put some blue Loctite on it too. Don't put the red. All right, this is kind of fun because the holes, I don't know if y'all can see this, but the holes for the bolt are actually in between this little support frame thing here. And I've got a screw stuck in there, I've got to get out. So I was opting to go with the screws going in this way, but I don't know, I'm still gonna go for that. I'm gonna put it at the end of the Allen wrench and see if I can balance it through the hole. Oh, I'm through. And now it's not on the Allen wrench. But I do have a screw head through. Yay, we are, we are in business. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this sucker on on one side. We'll see if that's a mistake later. On the other side, it's going to be a bear. Wish me luck. Going for the bolt. Going to close the deal. Get some loving for my Allen wrench on the other end. Get some bite. You can felt bite. Yeah, I think we're in. All right, we got one side, at least a bolt through. It's looking pretty cool. Let's go for the other side. This one, I have a feeling it's gonna be fun. And that one's on the top. That this other one's on the bottom, which is gonna make it fun because that's in the way too. I'm gonna try to go around it all without taking off anything else. Yeah, I think we're through on that side. All right. A washer, a lock nut. You know, I saw the guy online, he was saying this is really hard. And I would put it up there. I mean, as far as getting your hands in a tight spot and all that. But you want to try something more difficult than this? I remember having way more fun with the front bow tie on the Camaro. Go back and check out that video. That was a fun one. All right, we are in. Uh, this is going to be fun to tighten. I may have to get some help, uh, recruit somebody to help, or find the right 
size wrench. <laughs> We're gonna find the right size wrench. Appears to be a little eight millimeter. This little thing just popped off. It looks like it just pops out. It might give you some more room. Oh yeah, it does. Big time. That's gonna make life a lot easier. I recommend taking that off. Just take your time and get this thing. Uh, I wouldn't go too crazy tight with this, especially being a 3D printed part. Uh, you do want to make a seal, you know. So don't crank it enough to crack anything. But get her tight. And you gotta get enough to get that lock washer to bite too. I think we're about there. It's starting to feel more supported. And this one's in the top. Well, I think it ended up really cool. Added just a little bit, you know, of a touch of color to the front grill here. Kind of gave it that sleeper look a little. And uh, of course I paint matched my brake calipers. So that ended up looking really nice, kind of bringing it all together. And uh, you know, for those expecting to see just the crazy, you know, insane amount of horsepower or something like that off of putting one of these on there. I barely noticed a difference, if anything, uh, in horsepower putting this on there. But this is, you know, one of those mods that is going to help in the future, especially with the turbo, getting that cold air in there will help. Uh, we are planning on putting a cold air intake on here very shortly, shift kit, a couple other little things, odds and ends, just to make the daily driver a little more fun. It does come 3D printed from eBay, $60. Uh, but I did paint it and I think the results kind of speak for themselves. They look really good in there. All right, well, as you can see, it doesn't take much to get this on the car. I spent way more time talking than it did actually put it on the car. And uh, really simple, easy mod. I think it looks great on the car. Uh, and like I said, it's not gonna add a whole lot of power right now, so don't be expecting that. But as I add the cold air intake onto the car, a tune later on, uh, we could actually get a couple horsepower off this, you know, being a little bit colder air going in there. Either way, uh, it's a really cheap mod and looks pretty cool in the car. So two thumbs up on this one. I recommend it. And uh, if you haven't done so already, be sure to go ahead and hit that like and subscribe below. And I will see y'all in the next video. Thanks for watching.